Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Bootlicker shills. This place are serious. I'm Yusuf Lady, welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about Pakistan. And this isn't a, a huge story right now, but it's something that uh, I want to keep my eye on. I think everybody who's a geopolitical fan uh, needs to keep their eye on uh, things that happen in Pakistan. Um, as I've mentioned on a few occasions in the past, um, but Pakistan is potentially the most dangerous country in the world. The fact that they have such an uh, unstable history, uh, the fact that they are lo lo loaded with nuclear weapons, the fact that they have a, a gigantic intelligence apparatus and military, and they also have a, a, a rabid Islamic uh, underclass, not meaning to characterize necessarily Muslims as rabid, but uh, there is a, a, a potentially uh, easily um, radicalized uh, uh, lower class system uh, uh, in the in Pakistan that has the potential to be exploited and uh, makes it for a very dangerous situation but overall the the military's kept a, a handle on things there surprisingly enough and uh, they continue to uh, work with the United States and work against the United States as we already know uh, Pakistan uh, both supports and uh, or element, let's just say elements inside uh, Pakistani intelligence and military uh, work with the uh, militants and uh, the Taliban inside Pakistan and those forces uh, facing the United States inside Afghanistan as well. But anyway, what's going on right now is uh, these demonstrations, and they've uh, turned out to have some legs. These have been going on for a couple weeks now. It started in uh, Lahore. Uh, demonstrations and uh, they've since moved to Islamabad, the capital, and uh, events have gotten kind of dramatic. They, they stormed the, the private residence of uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, uh, whom they're calling for his resignation. And uh, three were killed and 400 wounded uh, in this move to Islamabad. And the uh, TV station's also been uh, stormed. And there's also 14 killed in Lahore. So. We're getting a little body count now, but that is not necessarily a dramatic event in Pakistan to have these deaths. The fact that there hasn't been more is more surprising. But uh, now, after the, the May election, uh, which was the first time in Pakistan history that one democratically uh, elected government was passed on to another uh, since their birth in 1947, and, uh, and now the opposition is saying that the general election last May was rigged, although generally speaking, the consensus seems to be that the election was fair. It was the third time Nawaz Sharif was a, a, a prime minister. Ironically, he was overthrown in 1999 uh, by a military coup run by Musharraf, and that's one of the sticking points now uh, between uh, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the uh, Pakistani militaries because he wants to pursue uh, treason charges against Musharraf, and uh, that uh, kind of rubs him the wrong way. But he, he has a general agenda that uh, rubs the, the military the wrong way in some respects. But I'll get to that. Um, let's get back to the story. Um, apparently, the, the protest has settled into Islamabad in the red zone in the middle of uh, the city uh, in front of parliament and uh, will continue on as, as we see now. And uh, one of the things that was rather intriguing is uh, some of the calls for uh, resignation and even calls for revolution are from this is Islamic scholar um, and he was a losing candidate and uh, uh, spends most of his time living in Canada so that makes it very suspect uh, I, ha I have to confess I haven't really done any um, research on this uh, Islamic scholar but uh, I want to find out more because just the fact that um, he resides in Canada and now uh, finds himself uh, fanning uh, opposition in Pakistan. Uh, smells kind of funny. And uh, would, I wouldn't be surprised if we have an agent provocateur um, to uh, uh, destabilize in Pakistan. And um, it might seem uh, counterintuitive to, to suggest a situation where the United States would want to uh, get involved in destabilizing Pakistan for the reasons I mentioned. 
before, a very dangerous country. But uh, as it turns out, the United States has a very uh, complete contingency plans for the uh, uh, commandeering of nuclear weapons in, in Pakistan should there be any uh, uh, calamity in Pakistan. And uh, that seems to make a lot of sense because uh, uh, people are concerned about an Iranian uh, nuclear program, and yet we have a situation in Pakistan that is far more imminently dangerous than, uh, than Iran uh, working on a nuclear program. So uh, very suspect. So uh, more on that later. If anybody has any uh, information or attachments uh, uh, to uh, give me, uh, please leave them in the comments. But to go back to this a reason why uh, uh, this uh, Prime Minister um, Nawaz Sharif has a, a rocky relationship with uh, the Pakistan military. And the Pakistan military apparently is, is somewhat supportive of these protests at this point. The fact that they haven't done anything says something. And uh, they will continue to keep their eye on this because uh, they're certainly used to seeing a lot of turmoil and a lot of violence uh, in Pakistan, especially during these election cycles, but uh, Nawaz Sharif is pursuing treason charges against Musharraf, as I mentioned, who is a longtime uh, uh, military man, and uh, therefore the military has its uh, uh, connections with him. The, the, the uh, trials that have gone on so far have been fine, but uh, uh, they don't want him uh, pursued any further. And then he wants to make, uh, Sharif wants to make peace with India. And uh, that's another problem with uh, the uh, cash cow for the Pakistan military is the standoff with uh, India. And that's what helps justify uh, their jobs in a, a massive uh, military uh, in Pakistan. And that's true all over the world. And then uh, he also wants to make uh, some peace negotiations with the Taliban. And um, once again, it's uh, complicated because we have elements in uh, Pakistani intelligence and military who have uh, uh, tight relationships with members of the pa Taliban, or at least support them, and then others who do not. Uh, so this uh, could cause uh, problems either way. And, uh, and then at the same time, of course, we have uh, Sharif uh, as part of, uh, part of launching this uh, counteroffensive against the Taliban and militants in uh, north, northern Waziristan. Uh, inside Pakistan, and um, so with all these uh, events going on, uh, we'll, we'll see if this has any legs, or if we see the what is probably the most predictable that the Pakistani government will be reshuffled again. The, the military will either uh, install a technocrat, or the uh, military will take over, and we'll just be back where we started. But uh, like I say, uh, nothing too. Uh, outrageous right now, but always a good idea to, to see if this leads uh, to more and uh, if we could see even more dramatic events in Pakistan, something we don't want. I'm a useful idiot, but you'd be one too.